my name is Artie Jones, and I'm the executive director of Clearly College Park, the business and industrial development authority for the city of College Park. And today, I would like to welcome Mr. Kevin Kern, who serves as the president of Grove Street Partners. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for having me. All right, no problem. So, Kevin, tell us, tell me a little bit about yourself for our viewers. You know, who are you? What do you do? And you know, um, some of the, your a little bit about your background. My background is uh, grew up in the real estate business. My father was a real estate developer here in Atlanta, so I'd always gravitated towards that industry as I got out of college. Um, I was with several firms, good firms here in Atlanta, and then in 2004, I started Grove Street Partners to focus on industrial development, and I brought in a couple of partners, and over the years, we kind of branched into office development and hotel development as well. Okay. All right. So... You said that you started out in real estate in, in college. Where did you grow up? Where did you? Are you from the Atlanta metro area? Been here since 1970. So wow, I'm you are truly not from. not a full native, but but uh, all but nine years of my life have been here in Atlanta. Okay, and you have any siblings? Uh, your parents in the area? Uh, the whole family? family's still here. My father, uh, unfortunately, has passed away four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, after a great career in the real estate business, but my mother and my sister are still here. Okay. My children are here, and, and the whole family's here. All right. Do you see that you know your um, extended family uh, are continuing to be in the real estate or development business, or you were just kind of that misnomer that's out there by himself? You know, I've got some other family members that are in the real estate business or in the mortgage banking business. Uh, I don't know how or why they picked it, but they're in it. But... Uh, you know, I'm not sure if my children will want to be in that business. They're probably going to gravitate more towards technology and the things that the younger kids are focusing on other than real estate. Right. But uh, as long as they're happy, I'm happy. Right. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, I've known you since I started with the City of College Park in November 2013. Um, and, you know, you guys have, uh, Grove Street Partners have been a partner with the City of College Park for some time. Um Tell me a little bit about, you know, your affiliation. How do you feel about the Aerotropolis area in general, the area around Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport? Well, in 2006, we responded to an RFP that was put out by the city of College Park to develop the land around the Georgia International Convention Center and the new SkyTrain. And one of the things that we thought was obvious was if there was going to be a SkyTrain that was going to connect the rental car facility to the GICC to the airport, that would create an opportunity for development, probably in potentially mostly hotels. As we studied it further, we saw that there was also a need for office space. One of the things that was difficult and one of the things that was a challenge about that was there hadn't been any new office space built in the airport what I'll call now the Aerotropolis submarket in a long time. I mean, right. 20 years before, you know, before we started on Gateway Center. So there was a lot happening in terms of how do we position an office building? The hotels are pretty, pretty easy to get your, you know, wrap your brain around. Right. Because, you know, you, you assume that the customer was going to gravitate towards the fact that it was a minute 50 second train ride mm-hmm. from GICC right. to the airport. Right. But how did you attract the tenant, the office tenant that wanted to be there. And over time, we've been able to do it. And over time, the the Aerotropolis has gotten legs and it's taken off. And, and I think that's going to be uh, a great benefit for the surrounding areas around the airport. Okay. So, um, you know, Class A office um, is something that you don't really see a lot of in the south metro area of Atlanta um, since I've been here, you know, everybody knows that north of I-20 is where you're going to find most of that type of product. Why now is Class A office kind of getting uh, traction here in around Hartsfield-Jackson? My personal opinion is we've been behind the curve on having Class A office space in the airport market. If you look at other major cities across the country mm-hmm. and you look at their airports, especially where there's international airports, mm-hmm. they have a healthy, vibrant office market surrounding these airports. And Atlanta was lagging behind 
the curve on that particular front, probably because you had a whole lot of different municipalities. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you can probably tell me how many different government entities there are in a two-mile radius of the airport. It's 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 quite a few, and I right. think when you had that kind of fractured government, it probably didn't set up for doing office development. You take that now and you add to it um, the fact that we're inside the perimeter, mm-hmm. you know, and land is a scarce resource. So, you know, as we've developed out on the north side of town, it's kind of logical that the airport market should be a benefactor of some of the office development that's going on. Mm-hmm. You do have rent shock for these tenants. You know, they're not used to seeing rents down here comparable to what rents are up in the um, northern markets. But as time is progressing, Mm -hmm. they're getting educated. They want more. They demand more. And so, you know, I think we'll continue to see that grow. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of the, the the biggest selling factors for office in the in you know around the the Aerotropolis, around the airport and College Park? What are some of the big factors? I look at it as convenience. Myself, people are tired of traveling, going through traffic to get to the airport. Those people that fly frequently. But what are some of the things that you're hearing from some of your corporate tenants? Airports number one. Okay. Number two, we've seen a a few, and, and when I say a few, you know, there's not that much office space, Class A new space in the market. Mm-hmm. So there's not 250 tenants competing for for office space. There's only a handful of those tenants. But we've seen tenants that want to take multiple offices mm-hmm. and consolidate multiple offices. They may have one down in Peachtree City. They may be up in Norcross. They may be up in Alpharetta. And a logical place for consolidation happens to be around the airport. Okay. And the fact that uh, we have the ability to quickly get to the airport from Gateway Center is a real boon, is a real plus. Mm-hmm. We had several tenants that said, you know, we we have a lot of our people fly in and out of the airport on a regular basis. Right. And the fact that we can have office space at Gateway Center and we can park overnight and not have to pay for airport parking. Wow. You know, that saves us X amount of dollars per year. It's not a lot of money, but it's a lot of money to that tenant when they're, when they're, you know, when they add up what their true cost of occupancy is and they're having to drive and park and they've got, you know, 20 employees that are flying out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It proved that, you know, being closer to the airport where they could have overnight parking was was a real benefit for them. So there's a lot of different little factors that kind of add up. Um, But I think clearly it's the airport. I think it's it's pretty convenient getting down here. You know, mm-hmm. we've got good public transportation. Right. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that are going in, in the right direction. And with the Aerotropolis, now there's a a more of a consolidated marketing effort and kind of yeah. all the municipalities are kind of rowing the boat in the same direction to get the word out about being around the airport. I think that's going to be good for everybody. Okay, good. Well, tell me a little bit more about Grove Street Partners. Um you talked about what you you know what you've done here in the city of College Park area, and you told me about industrial development, and that was the focus in 2004 when you formed the company. But tell me about Grove Street Partners and some of those projects that are happening outside of the you know South Metro area. You know, we have focused on other hotel development opportunities outside of the South Metro area. We've done hotels in Florida. We've looking at hotels in the Buckhead market. We're looking at other hotels in the airport market. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, uh, and so. We've done office projects up, you know, in the northern suburbs. So we're not a big firm, so we don't have to do a lot of development every year to justify ourselves, but we like looking at certain kinds of deals that are good investments. Right. Tell me what is your, you know, comparable. Um, I I take it that you work with local governments doing P3s, you know, public-private partnerships, what has your experience been working with governments in P3s? Um, how, um, I know when I talk to many developers, they really don't like to work with governments in most cases. Right. We talked about that. Uh, I think that's probably true. <laughs> and, and I think that reason is, is because, you know, municipalities and government authorities 
have a different agenda Mm -hmm. in a different set of circumstances than a private developer. And so sometimes those are become competing interests. And so I think the the biggest thing that we've learned is you need to be patient. Mm -hmm. You need to strive to understand what's the motivation for that particular municipality or development authority, what's their motivation for wanting to do a a P3? Mm -hmm. And it's not always going to be the same as what mine might be. Right. And I think you just have to kind of work your way through it, wade through it, and just kind of realize that if you kind of stick to it and stay with it, you can probably craft something that works for all the parties. Right. I know my experience working, I guess, I've been working with the government for 20 years, local governments, and, you know, College Park is a lot different than most of the other governments I've worked for. Uh, Most of the time, the government's motivated by tax dollars and, you know, just um, companies coming in, jobs. College Park is more so, they're not motivated so much with money. Um, They look at more quality of life. They look at the project not three to five years from now, but 30 to 50 years from now. What is it going to look like? What would be the redevelopment potential of of various projects? So, um, like you said, there is sometimes a conflict Mm -hmm. or not a meeting of the minds when you're working with the private sector. But You know, through a lot of deliberation, sometimes some heated negotiations, you can come up with, you know, some positive projects, just like um, the Gateway Marriott at, you know, the GS at the Gateway Center, Spring Hill Suites, office building number one and now number two. So tell me, um, what are what are some of the major obstacles that you think that the South Metro area or the Aerotropolis area will face in the near future as far as development. The communities are talking with each other, which is positive. Uh, the economy seems to be stable at the moment, but I'm seeing some signs that things are going to change some s- soon. Um, but what are you seeing? What are some of those obstacles that you see that are around the corner? Just having the right vision and the right plan for the region and for the area and being able to articulate that. Let me give you an example. You know, uh, Midtown did a great job of doing the blueprint for Midtown. Right. They created a vision and a plan for what they wanted Midtown to look like 20, yeah. 30, 50 years out. The same thing that College Park or East Point or Hapeville will have to deal with is, you know, what do you want it to look like 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I think one of the things that I'd like to see is I'd like for College Park to grow in terms of its housing base Mm -hmm. and the number of people that live in College Park. You know, I'm not totally up to date on what the numbers are, but I think if you take the number of folks that lived in College Park 30 years ago and compared those numbers to the number of people that live in College Park today, that's probably a declining number. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that hopefully by creating projects and different kinds of projects, it'll allow College Park to grow and prosper Mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, makes it a great place to live, work, and stay. Right. So that's, that's probably the biggest obstacle is how do we get there? Yeah. How do we get there? That's kind of what I'd sit there and think about now. You know, all these projects are great projects, but if they don't fit into the fabric of the community, then I'm not quite sure what it looks like 50 years from now. Yeah. Um, in College Park, um, and kind of when you look at the Gateway Center, where the Georgia International Convention Center is located in the Class A office and the new arena, which will be opening soon, it seems like the Gateway Center – was an is an island and then downtown college park is another island and old national highway and godby road is an island and you have i-285 cutting straight through the middle right um and one thing that college park wants is they want more homes and they want more home ownership um and i believe that you know our statistics is right about 65 to 70 percent of the homeowners in College Park are renters. 
um, hmm. for the most case, um, for various reasons. You know, Woodward Academy is here. Lots of families families have second homes that they rent and sometimes own. Um, and then we have a lot of you no know, deed restricted property in College Park where you can't build residential. So it has to be something else other than you know home uh, land for homes residences. So we have um, what we've we've chosen to do is that those properties or those areas where we can build residential, we're building more denser in those particular areas. We're trying to stay away from multifamily, but at the same time, if it's needed and if it's justified and, you know, we need a newer product, of course, we're going to move in that direction. Right. But, you know, home ownership, I think, is the is the key and more heads and beds other than hotels is also key um, because College Park does have a, a character all of its own, but it's kind of a, a dwindling um, um something that you don't see that often in College Park. We really don't want to lose what College Park is. Well, you know, you drive around College Park and you drive through some of these older neighborhoods and you have great old home stock, you know, those craftsman style homes and whatnot. Yeah. I'd like to see, just personally, I'd like to see College Park get connected to East Point, get connected to Fort Mac, get connected to downtown. I think, you know, we talk about uh, in downtown Atlanta, they, there's some projects around Georgia Tech where they're talking about life sciences and biosciences. Well, in my opinion, you know, those areas, Georgia Tech, if you connect Georgia Tech to Fort Mac, to East Point, to College Park, to the airport, and you have all those homes along the way, right. and you provide a place where young people can come in and buy homes and regentrify neighborhoods and put investments back into neighborhoods and whatnot. You've got the Beltline kind of further up on the west side up there mm-hmm. that's starting to take off. There's a lot of pretty neat opportunities coming up that are out there. Right. It's just how do you harness those in a way that it makes it work for College Park? And I think, you know, through the Aerotropolis, I think you've got a lot of good people kind of focused on how do you market that? How do you make that happen? Right. Well, I think a key also is the elected officials. Um, me being a staff person working for a local government, it seems as though that I've never had a problem working with another staff person for another government. But when it comes to the elected officials, sometimes that was not always the case. What I've found out here in College Park in the South Metro area amongst the cities of Hapeville, Union City, you know, City of South Fulton, um, East Point, is that they all communicate very well with each other. And now we're finally uh, getting on the same page and we're going after uh, projects collectively and not doing as much competing against each other. Right. Um, but one thing that I would, um, I think that this is the, the, the network that around the Aerotropolis or around the airport is truly growing. And I feel that it's moving in the right direction. And if it continues to move in this direction, I feel that that connectivity, like you were talking about, will it will be something that can become a, a possibility and a reality in the near future. Well, you, you talk about, you know, the, the competing interests between the different cities and municipalities. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is, to me, if you have a big corporate user that's considering Atlanta, the first thing we need to do is get them to focus on the south side. Right. Let's let's eliminate the north side and all that other competition. Let's get them to select the south side. From there, we can all battle out who's got the best location. Right. But and that's the kind of debate that we need to be happening. So the fact that you know the governments are now kind of rowing in the same direction, that's that's perfect. That's what needs to happen. We got to get them here first. Once we get them here, then we'll figure out. <laughs> you know, I'd rather compete with you then go have to compete with you and then somebody on the north side. I mean, there's just it's just a different bucket that's up there that you're dealing with. And so, you know, I think I think that will work. I think the the Aerotropolis trying to create a marketing group that focuses on corporate users similar to the DMOs. Mm-hmm. You know, if they take that model where the DMOs are selling, you know, hotel rooms on the south side. Right. You know, let's first get them on the south side. Then we'll figure out where they go from there. That's, I think that's the right way to be looking at things. Yeah. That brings me to uh, – that reminds me a lot of the um, the competition that for BMW's training facility. Mm-hmm. It started out as a, 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 a competition between, you know, three states. And then when it was finally broken down to just Georgia, 
there was, you know, they were looking at sites on the north side, the south side, east side of Atlanta for BMW. And finally, it was narrowed down to five sites on the south side and two of the sites in College Park, one in East Point, one in Hapeville. And then finally, it was narrowed down to College Park. But that's exactly, you know, we, we just want to get the spotlight on the south side right. first and foremost. Even, if, even though BMW didn't locate in East Point or Hapeville, um, you're still going to find homeowners that may possibly work at BMW that are, you know, living in East Point and Hapeville. Um, you're going to find out that you're going to find out that someone that's training at BMW's training facility, they're going to shop for soft goods in, you know, Hapeville um, or go to restaurants. So it's a it's a win win for everyone if you look at it. Um, so. You've heard about the the airport city development mm-hmm. in the city of College Park, and this is the the 320 acre development site with 220 right. developable acres. Um, there is a, a considerable amount of Class A office that's programmed for that particular area, along with entertainment venues, hotels, um, retail, um, and um, what else? Residences. Um, so tell me, what are some Give me some feedback on how do you feel about the airport city and the direction that it's going, and some pointers as a from a developer's uh, perspective in moving this project forward. That's a good question. Uh, it's a generous project because it's a large scale project. I think the best thing that we can hope for right now is we need to start with a small plan within the bigger plan, mm-hmm. and we need to figure out what's it going to take to execute that plan. One thing that I would like to see that I think will help overall, and I always use this as an example, and I don't know if it's the best example, but it's an example that I like using is, Mm -hmm. where's the grocery store? Where's the new Publix? Where's the new Kroger? It seems like, you know, if you're going to attract young people to come and live here on a full-time basis, you got to be able to provide the restaurants and the retail and the shopping that they need. And, you know, for me, it boils down to where's your grocery store? Mm -hmm. And without a grocery store, I think we're a little bit handicapped. You know, clearly you come outside of 285 and there's some options outside of 285, but I'm talking about inside kind of around this area. So I think, you know, if, if it were me, I would probably try and come up with a plan that is a limited amount of residential, Mm -hmm. a limited amount of retail. And I would probably say, okay, what commercial kind of space can we add to this mix, to this recipe, to bake the cake. Right. And I would probably go out and, and I would probably go and list three or four developers like myself that are in those areas. Mm-hmm. I'd probably sit down with the round table and I would ask the question, what does it take to get you guys to come here and do phase one of this project? What do you need? And I would list that out and I would start from there and then I would determine, okay, how do we get there? Right. And we understand, and then we just kind of keep working it until, until we can figure it out. I think it's coming. Right. I think it's. Um, I think we'll. It'll get there at some point, but kind of turbocharge it a little bit to <laughs> see. Right. But I think you know you've got a lot of creative minds in the real estate development business. But I think you know one thing I'd like to see College Park do is kind of really pull those people together and say, okay, what do we got to do? to get you to invest those dollars and make them make them come up with a plan to see how it works with College Park's needs. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And the thing is, is that um, if you hadn't heard, College Park, uh, they adopted the master plan on last evening uh, during the city council meeting. So that Congratulations. Was one, thank you. Thank you. That was one huge obstacle that we, we, we've, uh, we've, we're getting over. Um, now we're starting to work towards uh, the DRI process and enlisting the ARC and and going through that and and then working on entitlements you know side by side in the project. Um, so, but we've there was a, a comment last evening that we were looking at instead of looking at the entire elephant, we were looking at taking some bites out of it and we were breaking it down into some district plans, right. six district plans. And it, it sounds a whole lot like what you just said right. also. The only thing is is that I really want to get that private sector experience around the table to say what would it take for you, like you said, to invest in this project? What do you need in this project 
to feel confident to move forward and to commit to this project? I think I think if you did, I think you would get a very good response from those folks to have kind of that charrette and open dialogue type meeting. I think I think a lot of people would be very excited to come in and 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 work with College Park in that capacity. I know I would. Yeah. Okay. Well, look for a call soon, Kevin. Okay. You know we're. Uh, uh, I don't hesitate to uh, to, um, to give you a ring and um, to reach out for help because, you know, these projects would not be possible if it wasn't for the private sector. Uh, the public sector is there. You know, I'm here to kind of provide a framework, a foundation, but then I step back and I let the private sector do what it is that they do day in and day out right. to bring, you know, projects to fruition. So... Um, so tell me this, if there was someone out there that was interested in being a developer, what would you suggest for that individual or those individuals to do if they were interested in getting in that particular field? Because, you know, I see developers, I know that they, you know, they pull projects together. They're, they communicate very well because they have to talk with attorneys, architects, engineers, government people. Um and they are most of the time they're likable. If you're not a likable person, in most cases, most of the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in most we cases, have our moments. Yeah, yeah, everyone has their moments. But what would you suggest as far as someone that was interested in getting into the development? You know, I'm, I'm I'm helping a young man right now that wants to get in real estate development, and kind of one of the things I said, wh why why do you want to get in that business? I, you know, the tech business seems to be where all the fun and, and uh, the, the growth is, um, it, you know, it's hard to say, Artie, you know, there's so many different ways into the real estate development business. You know, I came in through a kind of a family way, but through other businesses and whatnot. You know, I think you just, real estate development is probably, it's a way of thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the thing I like about real estate development is I like creating something from scratch. Right. Uh, real estate developers also have a very short attention span on a lot of things mm -hmm. because they they would rather do 50 things than have to continually do one thing. Right. Um, <laughs> some people call it ADD. I just call it the, I just have a short attention span. But <laughs> you, you, you generally like creating something. Right. And I would tell you most, if not all, also enjoy doing something that you're proud of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's important for me and the partners of Grove Street to develop a project that College Park is proud of, that College Park can point to and, and say, you know, look what our partners have done. Come see what we're doing down here. So that, that's important. You want to do a good job. Most people do want to do a good job in their job. Right. So, um, you know, how do you get there? I don't know. I often wonder what else would I do if I wasn't doing this, and I'm not even sure what that would be. So it's hard. I'm a hard person to ask that question. I don't know if I have the best answer. Well, Kevin, I'd like to thank you for coming to the Clearly College Park podcast and talking to us about development in general and just about Grove Street Partners and the great work that's going on. And I would like to thank our viewers uh, for tuning in today and to be being with us here at the Clearly College Park podcast. So, you know, clearly, clearly College Park is where you will land in plain sight.